Good morning. Welcome to Mrs. Kopf's kitchen kindergarten classroom. Come on in. Here we go. All right, today we're going to talk about the next group of animals in the vertebrates, the birds. But before we get there, let's do a few uh, items of housekeeping. I haven't given up yet on my seed germination. Maybe you have. I'd love to see. Noah sent me a picture of his little plant. If any of you have had any success, let me know. I'm trying it again. This is only day two. Or maybe three. No, yeah, because <clears throat> we didn't have class yesterday. Okay, I don't see much happening. Check on that again later. Then we are learning these awesome poems for Mother's Day. So far you should have these memorized. And so I thank you from the heart for all you've done for me. And I bless the Lord for giving me the best mother there could be. <laughs> Number two, mommy I love you for all that you do. I'll kiss you and hug you because you love me too. And the new one for today is here. Here's a gift for Mother's Day. I'll try my best in every way. But when you get upset at me, relax and have a cup of tea. <laughs> Sometimes those who choose this poem <clears throat> for the card will tape a uh, tea packet inside since it says here's a gift, which is clever and fun. All right, so pick one. Well, I'll work on this one today. And tomorrow I want you to pick your favorite one. Is it this, or this, or this? And we're gonna write it inside of a card for your mom for Mother's Day. All right, here's our barefoot boy. Let's see what he talks about next. Bees in trees, ants on plants, frogs in bogs, cats on mats, wear bare feet. Wear feet bare. <laughs> they wear them late and they wear them soon and they don't have to wait for a day in June to go barefoot. Their toes are free to squiggle and squish wherever they be whenever they wish. And if it's chilly, they just say, pish. They don't have to wait till it's summer-ish, like me. <laughs> we got the bees, feet bare, ants, feet bare, frogs, feet bare. Look at these two lovely kitties, feet bare. Oh. All right, we got people feet with shoes on. Hey, this will come in handy, studying our animals. Did you ever think of the styles of shoes, pair after pair that people wear? Shoes with straps, buckles and flaps, low heels, high laces to tie, Oxfords, loafers, boots and sandals, all kinds of shoes that a shoe store handles. Did you ever think of the styles of feet in the woods on a path and beyond the street? Feet that have paws padded and thick. Feet that have claws scratchy and quick. Horny feet, thorny feet, lasting for years. Hoppy feet, cloppy feet, hoofed like a deer's. <laughs> All right, I'll read more tomorrow. from what we learned a couple days ago. Do you remember what the characteristics of a mammal are? Sorry, that light's kind of annoying. So see if you can memorize these. If you've already got them memorized, close your eyes and list them as I read them. 
So they have fur or hair at some point in their life. They drink their mom's milk when they're babies. The moms produce milk from the milk glands. Um, they're warm blooded, so they keep their body at the same temperature no matter the surroundings. They have a backbone and skeleton with vertebrae. They have teeth, lungs for breathing air, and four legs. Now today, I wanted to talk to you about birds. Let's look at our birdie puzzle that you guys love to do in class. Let's check, do the birds have a bony skeleton? You like to do this, this is our challenge. Let's do it off the board. Ah, here's the skull, and there's the wing, and you can see the vertebrae, and the tail. Let's see if Mrs. Call can do it. You guys are good at this. There's the chest, the breast, and ah, there's the two feet. Very cool. Now you can see. There's a bird, there's a bird. So I made uh, another file, and I'd like you to pull it up now. You can use it with me. It's called Characteristics of Birds. So the first characteristic is that they have feathers. It's the first thing everyone thinks about. And then wings. Feathers and wings. And the feathers are soft, and they're used for warm protection from the water and the snow. They're made of something called keratin, which is the same material that you find in our hair, in our nails, fingernails, isn't that cool? The wing feathers are for flying, the tail feathers help steer, and then their color is to a camouflage, stay safe from predators, and also to attract a mate. The male birds are more beautiful, trying to get the female bird to be attracted to them. And then here it shows a bird doing something called preening. And it's where they use their beak and they position the feathers and clean the feathers to keep them free of things like fungus and parasites. And also to keep the feathers in the best position so that they can fly the best. If the feathers are all out of whack and not together all neat, they can't fly as good. Isn't that cool? God made them be able to do that. All right, now, the other thing I just mentioned is that they have wings, of course, for flying, but not every bird uses their wings to fly. Some use them to run or swim. Can you think of any that don't fly? Hmm, there's some that are famous not flyers, like penguins, they swim instead. Or an ostrich, doesn't fly, but he's the fastest running bird. What's next? They have two feet. <laughs> this is a hilarious picture. And two kind of categories of feet are like a webbed feet, like this water bird, with flipper type feet for swimming, or these claw type feet for grabbing onto branches or grabbing their prey. They usually have four toes with a claw on the tip of the toe. Oh, babies are born from eggs. Look at those blue bird eggs. I love that color. And the, the bird eggs are solid. So that means that they're not soft, like a cloth. They're hard. And we'll get to other creatures that have um, leathery eggs that are more soft. But the bird eggs are solid and hard. Oh, all right, now birds have beaks or bills. I love this, this, um, this chart here. Definitely want to check this out. Look at all the shapes of their beaks and their bills. God is so creative. This is such a great example. And what do they use? Their beaks are for, you know, different things to help them survive. So here we have a grain eating, nectar feeding. Look at that for dipping into flowers. Chiseling, the woodpecker. Chisel is like to chip away at the wood. Surface skimming. 
skin is the surface of the water. Insect catching. Seed eating, look at that big perfect for crunching seeds. Fruit eating, look at that rainforest bird with that huge beak to eat fruit. Dip netting, so he dips like a net and scoops up fish from the water. Scything, ooh, a scythe is like a kind of curved sword that, or tool for chopping wheat. Um, look at that, he can slice with his beak. Probing, stick inside. Aerial fishing in the air. Scavenging like a, a vulture. Filter feeding, he scoops up the water and then strains out just the pieces he wants to eat, the little bugs or creatures in the water, and the rest go, the water lets out. And, oh, raptorial, like a, an owl or a hawk or an eagle. Look at that beak for tearing up the flesh of, the, of its prey <clears throat> that catches for food. I love that. Okay, so birds are also warm-blooded, which is similar to mammals. So far, do they have anything in common with mammals? Mm, not a whole lot. Here's our first real similarity, the warm blood. This is like a, a kind of a thermal scan of the heat in a bird. So birds are like mammals. They can stay warm no matter their environment. You know how to, their bodies can keep their temperature the same. <laughs> All right, oh hey, this is also like a mammal. They have a backbone, a skeleton with vertebrae, except that, ah, their bones are hollow. They don't have a straw. So you can look down into that straw, and the birds have bones that are hollow like a straw, which is awesome. Humans, we don't have that. And what does that help them? do. It helps them to fly because they're lighter. They don't have as much to pick up and you can get the air moving under them easier. Okay, many birds, most, migrate. That means that they go somewhere warmer in the winter and they go different distances. Some go a couple hundred miles, some go thousands of miles. Here you can see one that we often see the V shape of the geese. And they're flying somewhere warmer and also to find food because uh, in the colder places, the food goes away that they need. Okay, birds have lungs. Hey, that's another thing that mammals have, but their lungs are different. See all these extra sacs? They actually have a more efficient system of breathing than mammals do. It helps them retain more oxygen because their metabolism is so high. Their wing and heart and body are pumping and beating so fast that they're eating a lot and they're also using a lot of energy. So to get that extra oxygen, they need to survive. That's pretty cool. No, oh, look, they sing and they call. Oh, I love it. This time of year, the spring, if you get up early, as the sun's coming up. Oh, the birds are just so excited for the start of a new day, singing and calling and tweeting. And they use that to communicate to each other and also for protection. They can let their buddies know when there's danger or their family. All right, last one that I thought was kinda cool. They don't have ears like an outer ear like we do that sticks off the side of our head but they do have an ear hole. You can see the ear hole there, it's his ear hole. <laughs> this is pretty cool. All right, so I'd like you to, yeah, have your family pull up this um, characteristics of birds file and you can look through it and share with me any of your findings. If you find additional things, um, one of your assignments today is that I would like you to go and sit outside for a little while and listen, where's that? Um, and look for birds. Bird watching is just an amazing activity. You listen, you have to be quiet, and you look, 
You can be going on a walk or sitting in your yard. And I'd like you to jot down for me what you see in here. If you can sketch the bird, or if you know with help from your family, the bird call that you heard, um, or you know what kind of tree uh, it was um, calling from or resting in, or if you found a nest, please make me a drawing or a video or um, just type up a message about how your, um, your birding adventure went. It's a great day for it. Then, I have, oh, fell down. Some more cards here that I will scan and send to your family. And I'd like you to pick out which of these are birds and then cut them out and paste them on a separate piece of paper. Oh, here's the towel. And then you'll have your bird worksheet looking something like that. Um, if you'd rather not do that, you could um, make a, a checklist and you could write down the names of the birds and uh, to show that you know which of these are birds. You can make sketches of them, if that's easier. Use that. Then, let's put our bird back together. I have another page in our uh, vertebrates book. And I'll send this to, I'd like you to print this out and color it. Um, and put it with your mammal page. Keep it all together so we can make it into a nice book. And you can see it's got some of the features of birds' characteristics at the top. Feathers, hollow bones, warm-blooded, and hard-shell eggs. Then it shows what some birds do preening. We talked about that, but if you want to look that up on the computer, it's really cool. Nest building. Yeah, they take things from around their environment to make their nest. And then they feed their babies. Look at those baby mouths open. You know how I call you guys baby birds? And then I give you a drink of water from my water bottle without touching your lips. I just pour it in. This is what I was, what I always think about. Pour the water in, whoop, like a mother puts the food into her baby's beaks until they're old enough to fly off on their own. Then I'd like you to color these three common birds. A blue jay, a cardinal and a robin. Now I found from our Ranger Rick magazines some uh, pictures that if we were in class I'd put these out with some other books so you could copy these colors. So you can copy these colors or if you have your own um, magazines or books with birds then you could do the same. See if you can color them as realistic as possible. And then send me a picture and let me know how that goes or what it looks like. Then I also found, going through the Ranger Rick books, some beautiful pictures of birds. It says here that some birds use their feathers to talk. Here's a red-winged blackbird. Red wings and black. Flashes the red feathers on its shoulders to say, stay away. Ah, feathers are used to communicate. Here we have a peacock. Oh, look at these are called eyes. <laughs> they all look like eyes looking out at you. The peacock fans out his fancy tail feathers to say, look at me. <laughs> Here they are, fanned out. Whoosh. Here they are, a little more calm. Like a dress. Wow. We have a cardinal, oriole, tanager, parakeet, blue jay, indigo bunting, and a fairy wren. This cute little guy is called a wood duck. Look at that. They have a nest here in this tree. And he's jumping out. Oh, I love this one. The owl, the barn owl, has a heart-shaped face. 
It was such a great way to find a natural a shape in nature. I thought there was another. Oh, yes. Look at the swans. They're next together. We have birds. I think the swans can fly. Check on that. But um, they're so big. Look at all those white feathers. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, that's not fun. This guy has a funny name. He's called a, uh, how would you say that? Hoo poo. <laughs> this shows great feathers. Look at that color. Look at that striping. And then all gone on his head. I wonder what his beak is used for. Check on his beak. Compare it to the chart in the file I sent. What would that beak be used for? Ah, hey, it says here. A hoopoo hunts for tasty insects to eat. It says here, talk like a hoopoo. Say hoopoo, hoopoo, hoopoo. <laughs> it looks like he's getting insects from this log. That's my guess. And then this is a very tiny bird. He's the bee hummingbird. Oh, if you are, if your family likes to do hummingbird feeder, which mine does, my mom does it, it's amazing. Now's a good time to get your hummingbird feeder set up. So when the hummingbirds start coming back from their migration, and then they'll remember your yard and want to visit it. It's amazing to see those little tiny birds. It says here, the bee hummingbird is not much bigger than a bumblebee. Think about a bee. That's how big this tiny little bird is. All those amazing little parts, so awesomely crafted in that tiny little body. Amazing. Birds are probably one of my favorite creatures. All right, well, that's it for now. And uh, I'd love to see your work. Bye.